Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to be talking to you guys about Acanthosis niger cans, what it is, what are some of the risk factors for developing it, what are the causes, and finally I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the treatments to reduce or alleviate Acanthosis niger cans symptoms. So to begin, what is Acanthosis niger cans? Well, Acanthosis niger cans is a relatively common condition involving formation of grayish-brown hyperpigmented plaques on the skin. Uh, this, this, uh, the skin is often described as very thick and velvety. Uh, the most common sites of formation of these plaques include uh, the back of the neck, uh, the sides of the neck, and the axillae or the armpits. Now you can see in these photos here uh, the typical presentation on the neck as well as the armpit. Now less common uh, sites include the anal genital regions, um, as well as the inguinal folds, abdomen, and in severe cases, uh, the areola, lips, and other mucosal areas are affected. One important aspect of uh, acanthosis nigricans is that there is a symmetrical distribution in the formation of the hyperpigmented skin. Another uh, important aspect is that this condition is almost always asymptomatic and benign. However, a rare condition that can occur is known as a malignancy associated acanthosis nigricans, but this condition it typically occurs in older adults and has a very fast onset. So what are some of the risk factors or associated disorders that increase risk of developing acanthosis nigricans? Firstly, when we look at patients, we can clear, we can see clear differences between patient populations. Uh, in particular, Native American African American and Hispanic populations have higher incidences of acanthosis nigricans than do white and Asian populations. More specifically though, certain medical conditions are highly associated with the development of acanthosis nigricans. In fact, conditions involving hyperinsulinemic states, problems with insulin utilization, and abnormal glucose utilization are highly associated with development of acanthosis nigricans. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that conditions related to problems with insulin usage such as obesity, uh, which actually um, there's an increased incidence of acanthosis nigricans with increased weight. Um, other, other problems with insulin uh, utilization um, such as type 2 diabetes mellitus and insulin resistance all um, are associated with uh, the onset of acanthosis nigricans. Now another sim syndrome called polycystic ovarian syndrome um, is one that we don't always think about having associations with insulin resistance, but in fact there are associations between poly polycystic ovarian syndrome and insulin resistance, which increases an individual's risk of developing uh, acanthosis nigricans. Now the, the association between genetic conditions and acanthosis nigricans again comes down to the genetic condition predisposing individuals for insulin resistance or abnormal glucose utilization which increase the likelihood of uh, acanthosis nigricans. Some of these genetic conditions include Down syndrome, Rabson-Mendenhall syndrome, Alston syndrome, Cutis gyrata syndrome, and Costello syndrome. Now there are also medications that increase the risk of acanthosis nigricans and these medications typically are related to or cause um, misutilization um, of glucose or insulin. Such things as systemic glucocorticoids can do can cause uh, abnormal glucose utilization. Um, insulin itself can actually increase the likelihood of acanthosis nigricans. Some other things that we don't think about are oral contraceptives and testosterone, niacin, protease inhibitors, and aripiprazole, um, an, an atypical antipsychotic, can all increase the likelihood of developing acanthosis nigricans. So now that we know some of the risk factors and associated conditions for development of acanthosis nigricans, what actually happens during acanthosis nigricans? Well, the exact mechanisms for development of acanthosis nigricans are not well understood. The only thing that is known for sure is that there is a process of hyperkeratosis. Now, uh, there are several signaling pathways that have been proposed uh, to play a role in hyperkeratosis. One involves tyrosine kinase receptors. 
Another involves the insulin-like growth factor receptor 1. Another one involves fibroblast growth factor receptor. And another one involves the epidermal growth factor receptor. So how do these pathways actually operate to cause hyperkeratosis and acanthosis nigricans? Well, firstly, um, in insulin-like growth factor receptor signaling, any increase or misutilization of insulin can activate insulin-like growth factor receptor 1, leading to a proliferation of keratinocytes or dermal fibroblasts, leading to hyperkeratosis. With fibroblast growth factor receptor signaling, there can actually be a mutation in fibroblast growth factor receptor, leading to a hyperactivation of this receptor, and again, pro proliferation of the keratinocytes or the dermal fibroblasts. And finally, with epidermal growth factor receptor signaling, any mutation in transforming growth factor alpha, which is a ligand that binds to epidermal growth factor receptor, can also cause a hyperactivation of the signaling pathway, leading to proliferation of keratinocytes or dermal fibroblasts, all of which lead to hyperkeratosis. So now that we know why and how acanthosis nigricans develops, how can we treat it? Well, oftentimes acanthosis nigricans is benign and asymptomatic and does not require treatment. However, in many cases, patients often want treatment for cosmetic reasons. So the first thing we want to do is we want to target the cause. So some of the first treatments involve reversing or managing the cause of acanthosis nigricans. And as I mentioned before, obesity is one of the main causes of acanthosis nigricans. So weight loss is a very important treatment to reduce acanthosis nigricans. Other treatments involved um, include uh, medications for insulin resistance such as metformin. Now these have been shown to reduce acanthosis nigricans in some cases. And as well, um, discontinuation of the medication um, that actually is causing acanthosis nigricans such as uh, aripiprazole. Now if none of the above are applicable, or the, the case of acanthosis nigricans is very difficult to reverse, there are other options. Um, one is uh, topical retinoids, and the other one is topical vitamin D analogs. Now these have been shown to uh, reduce uh, the hyperpigmentation and um, some of the uh, plaque formation involved in acanthosis nigricans. Anyways guys, I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of acanthosis nigricans, um, some of the risk factors involved, uh, some of the uh, some of the pathways involved in in uh, the pathogenesis of acanthosis nigricans and some of the um, treatments available for acanthosis nigricans. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.